Hey, hockey fans, and welcome back to another edition of Puck My Life. We had to end up doing things a little bit different tonight. Mark is unfortunately unable to join us tonight due to a couple of his kids getting sick. I guess it's kind of moving through uh, the whole family. So hopefully by this Friday, we'll be all good to go. But have no fear, Jose is here. Yes, this is my uh, good friend, Jose Perez, and he is here hanging out with us tonight because we both went to the Chicago Wolves game out in uh, Illinois just a little bit ago. So how are we doing tonight, Jose? I'm doing Gucci. You're doing Gucci. You, re you ready to get into this game experience, sir? Yes, I have uh, I have some opinions. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we'll, we'll cover those and uh, everything else, and let's just dive right into this. All right, so the Chicago Wolves play at Allstate Arena, which is located in Rosemont, Illinois. It's actually just outside of Chicago. It's actually right across the street from O'Hare International Airport. And uh, here's a Google map of what it took for us to get out there. Five hours and 40 minutes from my house, 363 miles one way. Jose lives about an hour closer uh, for him, but uh, yeah, five hours and 40 minutes for us to get out there. We literally just, this was like kind of a uh, spur of the moment thing, as as you would say. And uh, I, I really wanted to go. They were in the Western Conference Finals for the Calder Cup. And I needed somebody to go with me and Jose was able to go. And I'm, I'm glad that he was able to go because we had a, uh, we had a really good time. It was really hot. Uh, we got a, a giant heat wave came through and with the whole thing going on with the, the shipping and all that, I haven't been able to get a AC compressor for my car and one of my windows was malfunctioning. So me and Jose nearly died in the car because of how hot it was. We literally, the thing that saved us was a, what was it that thermal bag that you brought? Yep. And we stuffed it full of cold Capri Sun. And That's we the way to do it. We were sipping that the whole way, and it the Capri Sun saved us. So, co pilot of the year, right here. Yep. Capri Sun saved us. Hashtag Capri Sun. All right. So, they play at All State Arena, and it's actually from the outside, it looked like a pretty newer, a much newer arena, but you look inside. And it's kind of got like a dated feel to it. I don't know. What, what, did, what did you think, Jose? Like from the outside of the building to coming inside, I, I felt like it was going to have a little bit more modern feel. But with the way the wood was and, and the seating, I mean, what, what were your thoughts? I honestly thought it was a modern uh, arena as soon as we got through the entrance. But the one thing that stood out from everything, obviously, besides the banners hanging on the ceiling, was the ceiling itself because if you look close if you look close to the ceiling it's literally all wood while other stadiums and arenas are like all metal and steel and whatever they do normally for that but that's all actual wood and i don't know how long it's been there but i can tell you that they take really good care of it and it's definitely unique you don't you're not going to find many experiences like that in either different leagues of hockey or just any other arena around the country yeah, I, I totally agree. And this was the first arena that I knowingly have been to that had a wood wooden ceiling like that. And I actually really liked it. I've seen pictures of other arenas throughout the U.S. and Canada that have the the wood ceiling. And I think it just kind of gives a different feel. I'm sure that the, the sound in there is different because of the way that it, it, it radiates off of the wood as opposed to metal. But uh, it was definitely a cool arena. And I'm not really sure if you can really tell a lot in this picture, but the one thing that I did not like about the inside of this arena, and maybe you agree with me too, Jose, but I did not like the angle of the seating. I felt like the angle, especially for the lower bowl, was really flat. And for where we were sitting, we actually had a hard time seeing over a couple of people that were just in front of us because the angle was just was just too flat. What What are your thoughts on that? I, I agree in a way like I know our seats weren't like the, the best but I mean it wasn't horrible but you definitely have a point because some people will sit in front of you who aren't necessarily like five nine or six two but they'll still have 
like a height advantage just by sitting on a semi lower level than you are. Mm -hmm. But they still, for some reason, they still block your view of certain angles and areas of the whole like arena and rink. It's weird. It's annoying. But you know what? It didn't ruin my experience. Yeah, I'd actually like to try to go around and, and find a few different areas to sit in that I think would be a little bit better of an angle. I think maybe on the ends it looked a little better. But they weren't they weren't allowing anybody in the upper bowl. The only people that we did see sitting up there were like the reserve players and stuff like that. And a few of the coaching personnel or extra staff were all sitting up there. Uh, they had like the polos on with like the logos and everything. So they were watching it from up there. But overall, I thought it was a pretty good arena. All right, so first thing we get up to in these, uh, first thing we get to in these arena reviews and game experiences is parking. So in this picture, you can see that Allstate Arena does have a lot of parking for itself. Like it has a huge parking lot that just belongs to the arena. It costs us fifteen dollars to park in this this arena parking lot. We were parked on the west side of this building, so the left side of that photo behind all those trucks and stuff like that, we were parked out that way. But if you look to the right side of the photo, uh, you'll see a Target out there. So there is a lot of businesses and a strip mall and stuff like that. So you could potentially go and park in those areas and just walk to the arena. It's literally just across the street. I don't know if you would be subject to some kind of ticket if you were to do that. I don't see why you would. But we didn't risk it. We just came up the, the regular uh, drive for it and then just, just paid the $15 and parked there. We could have probably done that and saved the 15 bucks, but we were already through there. We just decided to keep on going. All right, next up is tickets. So when I went to the Chicago Wolves website, it actually directed me to a page on Ticketmaster, and we were able to get the tickets through there. The tickets came out to about $59.00. So about 60 bucks, uh, it was $59 and some change. So $30 a ticket to sit lower bowl. We were at the top of the lower bowl. We were sitting in section row, section 104, row M, and we had seats 10 and 11. So I thought it was pretty good value for the game, especially the AHL game. There was other uh, games I was looking at going to around this time. I wanted to go to a Toledo Walleyes game, but that had already sold out, but there, for as far as these guys were in the playoffs, I was surprised there wasn't more people at the arena. And uh, it was it was actually quite disappointing for how many people were in there. It was actually kind of a small crowd. All right, merch. So at Allstate Arena, they had two little kiosks, corner sections set up just like this, little booths. They didn't have like a designated team store for the team. Their pucks ranged anywhere from like eight to fifteen dollars. They had some that were a little more money, and uh, so Jose and I we ended up getting the official game puck for the Chicago Wolves. This ran us, I think it was ten dollars, wasn't it? Yeah, about yeah, it that. Was, yeah, it was ten dollars. Cool thing was is that they actually did not charge us sales tax here, which was kind of cool because I know there's some places in Chicago and in, in the surrounding areas where they'll charge you a sales tax and they'll charge you a city tax and stuff. So it was actually kind of cool to not have to pay that. Uh, it's a great addition to our collection. They had a, a great variety of things. They had a lot of kids merch. They had women's merch. They had a lot of jerseys for everybody. And uh, what of all those jerseys up there, Jose, which, which one, I know you were kind of eyeing one a little bit at the arena. Which one would you have got? of those three variations that they have up there. I would say the one, the the white one to the left, like that one was catching my eye a little bit, but definitely the one in the middle of that, of the white one and like the, I think it's the green one as well. I think it's a green one. That The red the one gray. with the yellow. Yeah, yeah the that maroon one. maroon and yeah. Mm -hmm. That one is spicy. Spicy. Yep, the uh, maroon one was definitely the one that we saw the most people wearing of the uh, the three colors that they had up there. I, I had this jersey with me in the car, but it was so hot that day. Mm -hmm. And I thought that we were going to be able to cool off in the arena. I was wearing a tank top, and I still didn't cool off. So I'm actually glad that I did not wear this jersey that day because I would have sweated through it. I would have had to get a dry clean and everything. It wouldn't have worked out. 
But there was one other thing that I, I did end up getting. It was right below that maroon jersey on the wall. And I, I picked up one of their team shirts. It's an official CCM Chicago Wolves shirt with the uh, Wolves on the back. It's actually, I mean, it's, it's a pretty nice shirt. I really like it. It's kind of like got to feel like kind of where it's like like a workout type shirt. It was kind of expensive, though. I think it was like $35. So it was one of the more expensive T-shirts that I had bought. And uh, it's official CCM. Is it a screen print it. tag, too? Uh, this one, it's it's got like some sort of screen print tag on it. But it's official CCM. And uh, I like the feel of those shirts. And I know they're a little more money than just the regular cotton ones. But I don't have many of those to, to wear around on a, on a hot day. So I was, I was glad to snag that one. All right, so this is uh, if you if you're not familiar with the Instagram, whenever we go to a game experience and I get my puck and I take this shot, this is where we actually sat for the game. So that kind of gives you an idea of where we were and what kind of uh, view that we had for the game. If you're not already, please go over link in the description. Go over and follow us at Puck My Life on Instagram. All right, next up was concessions. Now the concourse for this arena had a little bit of a tight feel there was some times when we were walking around and you were kind of just like down a narrow hallway and then there was some times where you kind of like it was a bit of a maze toward the ends but it, i mean it was it was okay you had a lot of the the regular you know the, your pretzels and popcorn and all that stuff but one thing that stuck out to us and that we saw a lot of people getting was they were going over to this ike's pie shop and I'm not exactly sure what time of the game that we actually took this picture. This might have been when they were still letting people in. But there was people all over getting getting this pizza. And so we went up and tried to check it out and see what was going on. We had already ate before we uh, got to the arena. We actually felt like we were going to die of heat stroke. And so we went to a Chili's. And we, I think we each drank like a gallon of water. Yeah, we a piece. we easily could have cleared out their whole system of water because yeah. it was just that whole drive in a heat wave in Chicago in the middle of summer equals a recipe of just agony, agony. Yeah. But but we made it through. So we went over here and checked this out, and the prices for the slices. It was eight dollars for like a sausage pizza and if you see there in the middle it was 48 dollars for a whole pizza <laughs> four eight 48 dollars for a whole pizza but i mean look at look at the look at those pizzas i mean those those things were thick they had look i mean those are some big sausages on there i mean this this stuff it smelt really good i kind of wish we would have waited to come to eat at the arena but i would have loved to have tried this pizza but there was the a lot price, of people eating the price was like the only thing at least in, in my view that was just straight robbery i mean yeah. i get it arena's got to make money somehow but man Ugh. well you see there in the background it says connie's pizza so maybe they have some restaurants around there if you're, if you're from the chicago area and you're watching this game let us know if there's other places you can go to, to sample this pizza other than the arena or if it's just an arena exclusive, because I would I would definitely like to try that next time I go back to Chicago. All right. Next up is atmosphere. So we don't see this too often, but I feel like I've been seeing it more often. A lot of teams are doing what we call around here for the Saginaw spirit of fan bony. And this is basically a retired Zamponi, I think. I, I'm not sure if they actually order them like this or they re, it's a retired one that they convert. If anybody knows, let me know. But I, I think it's like one that's retired and they convert it to this. But anyway, it's got a bunch of seats on there. They drive different groups around. I think you can pay to do that and then just kind of build in the hype. They usually take like maybe one or two laps and then they're done. But uh that was kind of cool to see that. It's the third arena that I've been to that does that. So far, it's been Saginaw, Toledo, and now Chicago. And you're probably wondering what's up with the second photo. So the refs in this game seemed like they were, at least for the first period and a half to two periods, they were very one-sided, and they were calling everything against the Wolves. And there was this group of guys that were sitting on 
the uh, glass. And they, whenever there was a bad call, they kept holding up the eye examination chart for the refs to see if the, you know, to, 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 to mock them. And I, I thought that was kind of funny. There was at one point, there was like six people, I think, holding them and they were like pushing up to the glass yeah. and like trying to get the, trying to get the refs attention. Yep. So that, that was, that was kind of interesting. So, and then there was also these guys in our section. I didn't see these guys around in other sections, but they wore these werewolf Halloween masks. And whenever it was a pause and play or whatever, they were up dancing and having a good time. And it was just a fun, it was a fun atmosphere. But as you can see in the background, it really wasn't all that packed, but the fans that were there were excited to be there. And it was exciting to see that. Now, one thing that we did like, both of us agreed that we liked about this arena was their opening. So we're actually going to play a little bit of the opening. And uh, Jose is ready for this one. I know he's got something to say about it. But we're going to go ahead and play this opening for you. And this is something that I have not seen at an arena yet. So there's a lot going on. So bear with me with the... Uh, I'm not a professional uh cameraman so just take a look see and let us know what you're Well, it, it goes on for much longer than that. And like maybe like another two or three minutes before a single player actually came out. What I mean, you could see the way I jerked the camera like it got me and you could hear people laughing in the background because it, it spooked a bunch of people. But what, what was your initial thoughts on that happened? Jose? Because I know we both hadn't seen something like that before. I've been to a few hockey games and, you know, however long that I've been kind of doing this. I have never seen pyrotechnics or fireworks or whatever it's called in an arena like that for a hockey game ever. I've seen them do like, you know, the whole like horns and all that stuff, but I've never seen them do the whole flame thing. The flame thing was the most surprising thing. And now the reason why is because I would have thought at least that would be a fire hazard or the fire marshal, whoever would just go ballistic on the pyrotechnics team because i mean I, I mean i could tell you right now we were pretty close to the like the ground level you could just feel the heat just just blasting just just in your face oh for sure like being out in the sun in chicago and you know 100 degree weather that's hot 
But when you go inside into an ice rink, you would expect that to be cold, you know, it's like nice and cold. It was not cold, especially with that. No, 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 no that's a sauna. That is a sauna indoors that you didn't have to pay extra for. That is a sauna. Yeah, but, it was definitely interesting. Yeah. I, I had seen, I've seen uh, different arenas do the fire before, but the indoor fireworks, that was a first for me. I know at Amelie Arena where Tampa Bay plays, they, uh, they have this like, the, the name just slipped me, but they basically like shoot like lightning in there through like this scientific device that I forget. I had it just before I started talking about it. I lost the name. I'm sure somebody's going to correct me in the comments. But anyway, so like this was just really cool. And and when you watch the video, there was a lot of stuff set up. And I'm like, what, what is with all this? Like what, what's going to happen? But it, like I said, and it went on for a while. Like it wasn't just like 10 seconds and here's the guys. Like they literally, it was, like, it was a few minutes. And there was still a little bit more of that clip I could have played. That clip was uh the whole clip that I had was almost four minutes and 50 seconds from the time that they started that to the time that the last player had come out. So it was, it was a decent amount of time to get everybody they, out there, but they literally, dragged it. they literally dragged it like so far, like until like everyone got into the, the rink that I think everyone was like, okay, can we please like, can we please get to what we came here for, please come on now. I, I thought I thought it was cool. It's, it was definitely interesting, and I I applaud them for that. So, there was a few other little cool stuff that they had kind of set up around the arena. There wasn't too much that was like for the team. I mean, you can see this giant goalie mask was out there. They kind of wheeled it out, and people were getting pictures with that. There really wasn't a whole lot of stuff to commemorate the team around the arena, except for like a few little things like this this uh, wall that was painted that says Chicago Wolves four-time league champions, which they have to change that now because they are now the 2022 Calder Cup champions. So congratulations to the Chicago Wolves in that organization. They ended up beating the Springfield, I believe, yes, yeah, Springfield Thunderbirds for the championship. And I think they beat them four games to one. If I, if I remember correctly. So that game that we went to, it was, it was an awesome game. They won the Western conference that night and the final score was three to zero. Now, Jose, I don't think actually the next thing I'm going to be talking about, I don't think he really realizes there was another thing that happened at that game last night. And it does not involve the Chicago wolves. Do you have any idea what else happened hockey history thing happened that night that does not involve the chicago wolves nope because i was way too tired to even think about it well this is actually something i realized just recently after some more news came out about this but it has to deal with the stockton heat and so jose that game that you and i went to against the stockton heat was the last game of the Stockton Heat being the Stockton Heat. That was the last game that that team, that franchise had played under the name as the Stockton Heat because with just within the last few weeks, they have since moved. They're moving the team to Calgary and they're now called the Calgary Wranglers. So we actually got to watch the Stockton Heat play in their last game, which I thought was kind of cool to, to see that happen. It was something that I didn't realize until later on when I found out about this that they ended up moving. I mean, it's the same franchise, obviously. They're just moving to a different city. But to see them play under the, the Stockton Heat for the very last time in franchise history, which was actually really cool. So we, we actually got to be a part of that, Jose. So was, we got to see two cool things happen that night as well. So I think it just kind of helped round off the whole thing. You. It adds yeah, value. it does definitely adds more, and I think it makes it sound better when we say that when we tell people that we literally drove like 15, 16 hours in like two days with stop and go traffic and the Chicago crap, and yeah, there was they're working on construction and some accidents and all that, but we made it through. It was definitely we literally just ran out there the one night, got up early, left, watched it that night, stayed over, and then drove back the next day. That was pretty much it, but it was definitely well worth it. Oh, yeah, so, 100%. So, 
So if you guys have been following us for a little bit recently, we've been adding a new segment to the game experience videos, which is Spot the Mighty Ducks fan. And if you're like me, when you go to a lot of the games, you realize that there is at least one person out there that is wearing a Ducks jersey. Now, here's the crazy thing, guys. I had a picture. I don't know what happened to it, but there was a guy wearing that same jersey that you see the fan on the slide wearing. But when I went back through my photos, I'm not sure what happened to it. He was wearing a Conway one. I'm not sure if if I lost it on Instagram, accidentally deleted it. I went through my phone. This was well over a month ago that we went to this game. But there was somebody there, just to let you know. And uh, we were able to spot them, but so far the streak does continue. Unfortunately, we do not have that photo. Someone has it. Yeah. Yep. So this is the puck score that I ended up giving the Chicago Wolves. I gave them a 9 out of 10 on parking, 10 out of 10 on tickets, 8 out of 10 on merch, 7 out of 10 on concessions, 9 out of 10 on atmosphere for a total puck score of 43 now jose you were there with me what do you think of the way that i rated these guys on the experience would would you agree or disagree let me know i agree with everything besides one thing concessions i have never been and this is just not even just this game but any sport anything i've ever went to concessions are the number one thing i do not like about these things because of the prices and i get it they have to make money Mm -hmm. but my gosh bro 40 plus dollars for pizza like i'm 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 sorry i don't get it like drinks i get it because it's going to be hot or cold or whatever the season you decide to go and you know watch whatever yeah but especially for like hockey or like any like any sport really i I, i'm just not going to pay it and i mean that might be just me or plenty of other people out there but concessions I'm at like a five, like a six. Okay. I mean, it's, it smells good. It, it looks good. smells good. That's fine. That, that's fair enough. And, and in the Chicago Wolves defense, it was Chicago style pizza, which is a lot thicker. It's a heavier slice. And it is more expensive on average than regular pizza. So it to me, it makes sense. I thought almost $50 for a full pizza was a little excessive. Eight dollars for a slice for that wasn't too bad because sometimes you go to certain arenas and you're paying like eight to ten dollars for like two of those square slices at Little Caesars Arena of the Little Caesars Pizza. So I would like to try that and see how it compares to what Little Caesars is offering. But yeah, I I, I thought it was overall was was a really good game. Uh, we had a really good time. We did add in a new section too. We give it the wow slash x factor and so this we do and it's basically bonus points that we give the teams it's only out of three points i gave them the full three points because the only reason why i really dinged them on the atmosphere is just because there wasn't a lot of people there i thought with the game that we were at with the chance that they could have won the western conference championship and gone on to the calder cup finals i thought there would have been a lot of people there but the reason why I gave them the extra three bonus points was because of the intro. I thought the intro was cool. I never seen the fireworks before. I thought the fans that were there were really invested in the game. They really enjoy their team. And they were just really, they had a lot of pride for the their own team. And I, I felt like because of those factors, I gave them the extra three points to round off their total score of 46 points. So I would... I would definitely recommend going to see the Chicago Wolves this in your area. What about you, Jose? I would too. And just to touch on your point just a little bit more, I think the whole like ratio of you know fans being there filling seats, I, I, I agree. Because if more people actually showed up, it would have been absolutely nuts. Like the more people you're surrounded with, like like minded, you know, invested in the team, invested in the game itself. I think the better result you will have in the end, like a better experience, connections, I mean, community, everything. The atmosphere is literally a make or break for a single game. Because if you don't have atmosphere, 
you don't have good good vibes you don't have that energy you're just kind of sitting there like oh hooray uh, uh. but when you are actually in the moment you're just clenching your fist like okay make this make this you got it you got it and then boom yeah excitement and and having a packed even if just the lower bowl was packed and it was a sellout crowd it would have just took it up that much more it would have made it i mean it was still an exciting game don't get me wrong yeah. but having that many more people in there would have just that whole place would have really would have added more value. really been rocking right yeah exactly so um yeah so that pretty much wraps up the the game experience just a few uh uh house things for you but uh if you're not already go over follow us on uh at puck my life on instagram if you want to see more clips from this game, some of the highlights that I took, if you go on our Instagram page and you see the AHL highlight tab there, click that. You can go through a couple of the other AHL games that I've been to, and you can see some of the stuff that I've experienced there at the games. There's a, at least three that I know of in there. Check that out. Also, give us a follow. Go check out some of the reels we got up on there. Check out some of the other leagues that I've been to as well. And there's just a lot of cool stuff happening on there, along with a giveaway that we are doing, which the giveaway runs until the end of the month. There's two different ways to enter this giveaway. One is you need to subscribe to this channel. You need to go on our channel and find the video that says, who's that hockey team? Watch that video, like that video, comment on that video. And if you'd like to get a second entry into that giveaway, Go over to the Instagram, make sure you're following the Instagram, like this post, and then share it on your story. But you also have to tag us. Make sure you tag us in that so we can see that. If your account is private, let us know, because if you tag it on a private account, we've been having some difficulties of it coming through. So let us know if you're trying to do that. The instructions for that are located below the post. Like I said before, the cutoff for that will be the end of the month and then we'll be doing the drawing on the 5th of september if during that time we get to over 200 followers on instagram and we get to over a thousand subscriptions on youtube we will doing we will be conducting a second giveaway we'll be giving away another item that night so stay tuned for that we're going to save that item for the night of the drawing so if you haven't already Go over, enter that. You still have some time, but do it before you forget. And uh, so, yeah, that that wraps up tonight. Uh, Jose, I really do appreciate you stepping in for Mark tonight. I know Mark appreciates it. I was able to chat with him for a few minutes before we went live. And um, he, is, he is sad that he was not able to be here tonight, but Jose was willing to jump in. We had... We literally had everything ready for the original show that we were going to do when we were going to talk about the WHL and the Big Ten Conference for Hockey. And then we had to throw this together, not necessarily last minute, but uh, earlier this afternoon. And uh, Jose was a willing participant to come on here and talk about this. I have a few other friends that have gone on game experiences with me. We'll try to get those guys on here when we discuss those game experiences that we went on together so uh any any last words jose before we uh let everybody go for the evening um i would say if you're gonna be traveling on the road i would say even summertime for hockey games make sure your car has ac and it is not during a heat wave all right cool well, <laughs> well thanks for that jose i i did get the window fixed but we are still waiting on the ac unit i don't know where it's at or whatever <laughs> but it's it's somewhere We'll, we'll get it all figured out eventually. We'll, we'll have it ready. I'll have it ready for next season if if we go to more games in June. Because I, I hadn't really gone to games in June before, but we'll see what happens. So I'd like to thank everybody who stopped by tonight and everybody who viewed this not live. If you came in after the live taping of this, we appreciate that. And just remember, guys, it's all for the love of hockey. We appreciate every one of you that stopped by. You guys have a splendid evening, and we'll talk at you later. Thanks.